Hey everyone, Morton here. Welcome back to our speedrun series, and I hope you're all having a good holiday break. And we're back into a modern defense this time. Um, we're going to change the move order up, starting from this level on, just to give ourselves a little bit more options instead of going straight for a pick. And depending on what our opponent chooses, if they go for a more aggressive setup, generally the ones where they're pushing the f pawn or the ones where they're going for this sort of queen and bishop battery to go to bishop h6 and attack our king side directly these are typically the more dangerous ones and in these instances i'm going to try and delay my knight from developing to f6 just to put a stop to this um, bishop move now after the move bishop to f4 um, i think the downside here is that this pawn is a little bit weak compared to bishop to e3 so we could play the move knight to c6 here this is um typical response or we can directly try to go for e5 we also have some plans of playing c6 these are all very um, interesting ideas i'm going to try and uh, stick to this plan of playing c6 just to make it simpler for for you uh, in most of the case, I'm just put pawn on c6 and try to go for some attack on the queen side. Okay, the move queen to d2 here. So I'm going to continue with knight to d7. Castle's queen side. Makes sense. And here we have some options. So I can move my knight at this point, but I do allow bishop h6. So our goal is to try and delay it as much as we possibly can um, we can go for an immediate attack on the queen side with this move pawn to b5 which is often um, often pretty good way to get some counterplay going followed by say knight uh, b6 and queen to a5 these are all pretty decent options Okay, so if we get pawn to b5 here, what can he do there? Maybe he has a move e5, but after e5, I'm probably going to close up the center with the move pawn to d5. And I think if you get a closed pawn center here, it's probably going to be quite favorable for you. So I'm going to continue with the move pawn to b5. So pawn to f3. So yeah, this is called the 180 attack and this is probably the most dangerous uh, option for white when facing either the peak or the modern. So you have to be very, very um, ready for this sort of um, sort of setup. Now we can play the move pawn to b4 right away. If pawn to b4 right away, we can continue with perhaps queen a5 or rook to b8. Or we can try to go knight b6 here. This is another option. Knight to b6 looks very interesting. As well as queen a5. So we want to play these moves in some sort of favorable order. I quite like this aggressive move with the queen. So I'm going to go with queen to a5. Um, in a lot of options, in a lot of situations here, we can put pressure on this a2 pawn. And sometimes we can also go knight to b6 and follow through with knight to c4. Uh, the fact that we have the queen here and the king on c1, we can often take the queen with check. But he's sort of removed this option from us by shuffling the king across now we have to be very careful of knight moves which would open our queen up to some sort of discovered attack in this type of um, position so i'm thinking of the move knight to b6 just continuing on uh, we can also go b4 after the move pawn to b4 the knight doesn't have 
too many good squares but to go to e2 but I don't see a good follow-up afterwards and this knight's just gonna hop back to c1 and probably jump into the um, square on b3 so I'm just gonna continue with the move knight to b6 I don't think he has any good discoveries like knight to b5 doesn't work because I can trade queens if he gives a check I can go king to d8 so that's that's not really an issue so he's, he's opted for h4 now the typical response to h4 is just to go h5 and just to slow everything down on the king side and that's probably what I'm going to do in this position because I think allowing h5 is probably a bit too much let's go h5 so he goes g4 so he's just going straight up for a pawn sacrifice here so if we take it I'm not sure well, what's his idea he's gonna push the pawn we can decline this sacrifice but if we decline it then let's say play knight, knight f6 he gains a lot of space with the move pawn to g4 to g5 so I'm I'm sort of inclined to just take it I mean if, if you don't really see a refutation to your opponent's pawn sacrifice then most of the time you can just capture it I'm just gonna take it see what he does so okay so he captures okay but this lets me capture with the bishop and also gain a tempo so he's just sacrificing this pawn but the way he's sacrificing it seems a little bit dubious I think because the issue is that this knight doesn't have too many squares so if I do capture this bishop I, uh, he can't take back with the g knight because then b4 is winning the knight on c3 and if he takes back with this knight I happily trade queens therefore he has to take back with the queen but then I also have b4 so yeah this doesn't look like a very favorable trade for him so it is a common idea to sacrifice this pawn but in, in this position I'm, I'm not so convinced and I can follow through with this move pawn to b4 see I'm not I'm not so sure about his pawn sacrifice with g4 I think he probably should have waited on that a little bit maybe played the move knight to h3 instead this is usually the better option because now he's um, forced to sacrifice a piece now obviously I want to keep the position as closed as I possibly can um, but I'm going to take the knight first because taxis of a knight and now what's the best way to continue so I can continue with this tempo move knight to c4 and then maybe close the position up with d5 I also have maybe some ideas on knight c4, knight takes b2, followed by rook to b8. These look very interesting as well. I don't see any checkmating threats from him, and it looks like it can be useful to put the knight on c4. So knight to c4, queen to d3 d5 maybe he plays e6 there to continue his attack I mean, he's most likely going to follow through with e6 at some point so you need to you need to be expecting the move pawn to e6 next move but whenever he plays e6 you can always take this pawn and often in a lot of these positions the king is actually perfectly safe on d7 so this is another option we should um, keep in mind as well but okay knight to c4 queen to d3 maybe queen to b4 maybe pawn to pawn to b3 
perhaps we we give check on on a3 it seems reasonable for us we can also take the pawn perhaps what happens if we just take the pawn take take and then bishop takes He does have, let's say, rook to e1. It looks a little bit scary, but I don't really see any any clear way for him to to win from there. So he probably can take the pawn. I really want to get some sacrifice going here, but doesn't look like it's working yeah I don't, I don't really see too much here I think maybe we just take the pawn the king's always safe on always safe on this square I can just shuffle the king across to f8 and Tuck it away on g7. So if we can get the knights traded off as well, that should finish up most of white's attack. Probably look at playing knight f6, knight d5, something like this. No discoveries from the knight. Importantly, no queen checks as well. So if he takes here, then our knight covers the d7 square, so we don't really have to worry about any mating threats. So I'm just going to take this pawn. I don't, I don't see anything here. Okay, so our opponent goes for bishop to e3. Okay, well, this move is very tempting, but unfortunately, it allows it allows the queen to hop into the d7 square. So I'm just going to start off with the move knight to f6, preparing perhaps knight to d5. Or knight to c4 next move. So it's move 17, we've basically delayed the development of this knight until much, much later into the game. Okay, rook goes across. So if we go here, the queen is probably having to move to one of these squares. Since it can't give check on d7, it'll probably go to g2 or e2 because these attack my knight or attack my pawn. This makes the most sense. Now this probably requires a little bit of calculation, so let's Let's have a look at knight c4, let's say queen to g2, which is the only decent attacking or counter-attacking move. Then, let's say I take the bishop. Okay, so the queen takes here with check. Now let's say I move my king. Let's say the queen takes the rook, the king moves across to g7. So then in that case, I would be opening up an attack on the queen with my rook on h8 and also I still have this fork on the rooks which would end up in 
a massive exchanges and should be in my favor. So I continue with knight to c4 here. If anything else, like queen e2, we also can just exchange off all the pieces. Or oh, we also have some ideas of knight takes b2 as well. So there's not many tries left for white here, but he should try probably queen to g2. But I would say compared to the peak defense, the modern defense definitely gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot more options, especially once you reach higher ranks and I definitely recommend it over the pick, but you do, you do want to know um, as much of the subtleties of, in the position as you possibly can, because there'll be many positions where your king just simply doesn't castle and just stays in the center. So here we can take with, well, we can take with either piece actually. We can even take with the queen. So we take with the queen, pawn takes, we have rook check, and we actually can win our queen back after that as well, but just go bishop takes. And we have rook check here, and this leads to mate after the move queen takes c3. Okay, so back into the analysis. So here, so we can transpose back with the move knight to f6. And it's actually giving knight f6 is the best move and it probably is fine with the bishop being on f4. And here you can just castle next move. So this would be totally fine as well because even if you allow bishop to h6, usually you can just castle into this or sometimes you can take and go for some... Um, queen side attack, but usually casting should be fine and then following through with either some pawn break in the center or some queen side counterplay as well, but I, I tend to um, prefer to just keep the bishop on if I can because it gives you a lot more attacking options um, That's why I played the move knight to d7 and I went for this relatively simple plan Which I think you can try to replicate in your games and that is this plan with um, b5, queen a5, and knight to b6, followed by either some knight c4, rook b8, or some bishop e6 ideas. So here, queen a5, king b1, and we played the move knight to b6. So it's giving b4 as the best move, but I didn't really want the knight to go back to e2, and I didn't really want this knight to hop across to c1 where it's actually doing a good job of defending the pawn so I decided to go for this knight to b6 instead which I, I think it's fine as well after the move h4 so a very typical response to h4 is the move pawn to h5 so always keep this pawn push in mind the idea is just to slow white down from this g4 pawn push and in a lot of positions, actually, you can follow through with the move bishop to e6 next. Actually, the engine is not afraid at all of h5, and it just wants to go bishop to e6 right away, which is um, also fine because I suppose you're threatening the move pawn to b4. So white doesn't really have time to play h5. So if h5, pawn to b4, and now the knight's being attacked, and if the knight moves, then we have this nice checkmate on the queen side. So white has to be very, very careful here. So I think bishop e6 would be totally fine in this position as well. Um, my intention was to play bishop e6 a bit later. 
after h5 uh, yeah this is a serious mistake g4 because i don't think the pawn side gives white anything i mean instead white should have gone knight h3 here i think this would have been a much better move um or a3 as well as the engine is hinting at just to stop this b4 uh, idea uh, typically after move knight to g5 uh, knight to h3 you have to capture the knight because you don't really want the knight to end up on g5 it's extremely difficult to get rid of the knight once it um, ends up on this g5 square so most of the time um, it's best to just give up this bishop even though you may not want to because if you play let's say knight f6 the knight might end up on g5 and sometimes it's okay but the knight can be very very annoying on this square so but after the move Pawn to g4, then we can just capture, capture, and capture. Actually, the trade of the bishops doesn't really help white at all, um, because after the trade, it seriously weakens this c4 square, so now the knight can always hop into c4. With the bishop guarding the c4 square, at least uh, white can always capture it off the board, and black does get the open b file in those positions, but um, at least white gets rid of this light squared bishop which is often not doing anything um, for white the problem in this position for white is that he can't really recapture back so in the game he took with the knight but all the other options are not favorable so queen takes also runs into b4 with the knight being trapped uh, this is exactly why a3 um, was probably needed at some point in the game even though a3 allows black to at some point rip open the queen side it's probably necessary and trading queens here with knight e2 doesn't really help white either since he's already sacrificed the pawn and here yeah black should just be winning we just need to trade off a bunch of pieces here and we should be good let's see four yeah the best option is probably queen g2 but this not too much um not too much counterplay there and the rest is fine so i hope you guys um enjoyed this game in the modern defense we're going to see a lot more modern defense played uh, from this range on and i hope you guys can sort of replicate some of the ideas shown in this game um I hope you guys are having a good holiday break and i will catch you guys on the next game see you later mm -hmm.